Hey there, I'm Brittany Smith and welcome to Filmmaker Symposium. So today I'm going to explore doing a DIY light diffuser. If you know anything about light diffusers, they can be quite expensive the larger you go. The one that I want is actually $400. It's an 8x8 with a light diffuser frame and then a light diffuser cloth. Now today I'm actually going to explore purchasing PVC pipe and light diffuser cloth to see if I can keep it all under $50. So the first thing that we need to do is get our supplies. So I'm headed off to the hardware store to go down the PVC aisle because most of my supplies are gonna be PVC related. Now be sure to get a pencil and paper because if you wanna make this stand yourself, I'm about to spout out all these parts like a fire hose. So we need two 3 4 inch T connectors, four 3 4 inch elbows, eight 1 inch elbows, two 1 inch 45 degree elbows, eight 1 inch T connectors. Now we're gonna get some 3 4 inch 10 foot pipes. Now you can get schedule 40 pipe, which is a lot stronger, or you can get pressure pipe. I settled for pressure pipe because it gets the job done and it fits my budget very nicely. And now we're gonna get four one inch 10 foot pipes. All of these supplies came to $42.84. Now it's time to measure and cut our pipe. The first pipe is gonna be cut into two three-foot pieces and two two-foot pieces. Our second pipe is gonna be cut into one 62-inch piece and four one-foot pieces. Our third pipe is gonna be cut into one 62-inch and two one-foots and two 17-inch pieces. Pipe number four will be cut into two two-foot pieces and four 1.5-inch pieces. Now, as you can see, I'm using a pipe cutter, and I highly recommend this for anyone who wants to cut their own pipe. It's only about $13, but I already had one on hand, so that was free for me. And after you're done cutting everything, make sure you label your pipes. It's very easy to lose track, so you want to make sure these are labeled properly. So now that we have all of our materials cut and ready to go, we're actually going to head to the garage to see if this thing actually works. Okay, so here we are in my messy garage again, and now I'm gonna start assembling the feet of this stand. But before I start doing that, I wanna make sure that I sand the edges of my PVC pipe, because when you cut PVC pipe, it does get a little bit warped. And that's just simply because you can't make a clean cut with those um, PVC cutters. So right now I'm gonna go ahead and sand all the edges of my PVC pipe so I have a nice clean fit for my elbows and T-connectors. Okay, so now that I've sanded all the PVC pipe, I just wanna give a little tip about sanding. Make sure you get 120 sandpaper and not 220 sandpaper because it will go a lot faster. Okay, so now that I've sanded my PVC pipe, I'm ready to start connecting it to T connectors for the feet. So I'm first gonna take two of my one foot pieces, my one foot, one inch PVC pipe, and I'm gonna go ahead and stick it inside this T connector. Then I'm gonna take another one and stick it inside as well. All right, the next thing is I want my 1.5 inch long PVC pipe, which is this little guy here. And there we go. So here's the first side for our feet. Now I'm gonna make another one of these and once I'm done, we'll come back. All right, so now I have my two feet all ready to go. And I've got my little 1.5 inch extenders on the inside of these T-connectors. And the next thing I need to do is attach another T-connector to my, extender, my extensions. So I'm gonna take this T-connector here and I'm gonna place it like this. So you don't want the, the T part, you just want one of these sides here. All right, so now that we have that set, let's get our other one set up. All right, so now we have both of these pieces here 
and these are gonna go on the floor like this. So, and after I get them set up on the floor, now I'm gonna actually get a long pull to connect those so that it's stabilized on the bottom. So after I put my five foot pole in between, I wanna go ahead and get two elbows so that we can start building the support for this stand. So now after that, I'm gonna add these one foot poles to those elbows. Then I'm gonna take my two foot poles and put them in the middle. I'm gonna take two more T connectors and I'm gonna point them on the outside and apply them to our two foot poles. After that, we take our 45 degree elbows and we're gonna put those on the back poles that are one foot tall. And now I'm gonna take my 17 inch pipe and I'm gonna apply it to the 45 degree elbows. But before I do that, I want to apply an elbow so that it can connect to the front pole. So here I have my elbow and then I have my 17 inch. I'm just gonna go ahead and stick that right onto my 45 degree elbow. So now I just need to connect my 1.5 inch little piece to both the elbow and the T connector to connect that support. All right, now we're ready to go beyond the little footstool and we're gonna build up this diffuser stand. So the first thing I'm gonna do is take my three foot long pole and my two foot long pole and I'm gonna connect these by a T connector. All right, so now I have an approximately five foot long pole and I'm gonna make another one of these so that we're ready to put them on the footstool. So now that I've got my two stands made, I'm gonna put the three foot side on the bottom and the two foot side on the top. That will make the diffuser a little higher. Now, if I want to make the diffuser lower, I could actually switch this around and put the two foot on the bottom and the three foot on the top. Another thing that I actually might do in the near future is divide up these poles into one foot poles. And that way I can put more T connectors and I can adjust the diffuser as needed. But for now, I'll just stick with this. All right, the last step for the actual stand is this pole that goes on top. Before we put it on top, we need to put some elbows on it. And because I'm so short, I'm gonna have to get a chair because it's too high for me. All right, so now we have our stand ready to go, but now we need to start on the actual frame for the diffuser. So I'm taking my 2.5 foot 3 4 inch pipe, and I'm gonna connect that with a 3 4 inch T connector. And there you have it. So we have two of these right here and here, and these will go on the side like this. But before we connect them to the other part, we're gonna have to get elbows on the ends of these. Now that I have my elbows attached, now I can attach the other long pieces, my other five foot pipes. So now before I attach the actual frame to the stand, I need to make sure that I put my diffuser cloth on it because it will be a little tricky to get it on once the frame is on. The PVC pipe is not extremely stable. This is not meant to be like an actual C stand, even though it kind of acts like a C stand. But you wanna make sure that you kind of finagle the way you do things so that this, this stand doesn't fall over. Now the actual diffuser cloth that I have is 20 feet long. So this gives me the opportunity to cut it in half and then double up 
on the frame. Now I really want to double up because I don't think this cloth is going to be good with just one layer. I think it needs two layers. So what I've done is I cut that big long strip in half, but then I also added some Velcro right here so that it's ready to go on my actual frame. Now next week I'm going to show you how to make this diffuser cloth so that it can fit on your, your actual stand or your frame. But for now, we'll just use this cloth and you'll have to wait for the next video. All right, so now I've got my diffuser cloth attached and I'm ready to lift it up. The only thing is I am exactly five foot tall and this frame is exactly five foot tall which is going to make it somewhat of a challenge for me to get it up. So I'm going to go ahead and get some help and we'll get this show on the road. All right. And that's a wrap. So now we have our fully formed light diffuser stand and the diffuser on it. So there's a few um, little tweaks that I probably need to make. The one thing that I really want to do is create the extra uh, T connectors so that I can connect the frame higher or I can connect the frame lower. That way I have more options for the adjustability. So I'm pretty pleased with how it came out. The sides are a little bit bowed. I need to figure out why that's happening. It could be that it was a mistaken to cut by me, most likely. One of the poles was supposed to be a little bit longer than five feet and I think I might have cut it by five feet. So. The, the solution to that though is pretty easy. I can actually take apart this diffuser frame and after taking it apart, I can cut the top and bottom bar so that they're a little bit shorter. That way it fits a little bit better and the outsides don't bow. But either way, I think it's working out great. This is probably not the best outdoor diffuser, even though I probably will use it a little bit outdoors but it's most likely going to be indoors most of the time. It's not super stable. Once again, it's not one of those metal C stands that are super stable and um, very rigorous and can handle a ton, but um, this will work for what I need it for. So let's go ahead and test it out real quick. All right, so on this side, I've placed a really hard light so that you can compare the difference between a regular light and then a diffused light. I'm using the same exact lighting, same exact temperature, same exact power. So you'll be able to compare very easily how this works. So I'm going to turn this light off and then turn that light on. So as you can see, the difference is quite phenomenal. The lighting that's coming through this diffuser is much softer than the hard light was over here. They're both the same distance, both same power, but the effect is so much different. You can see that the light is hitting me a lot more gradually across the face. It's not hitting me really hard and then have a really hard shadow. It's more of a gradual transition from light to shadow, which is exactly what we want. So I'm super pleased with how this diffuser turned out and I hope that I can use it in many projects to come. So I hope you enjoyed this episode as much as I did. If you want to see how I made the fabric that goes on there with the Velcro, be sure to catch the next episode because I'll be covering that and a little bit about negative fills and how to use that with this stand. So be sure to like and subscribe because you don't want to miss another episode because I want to see you next time on Filmmakers Composer.